Hello everyone, Daryl here, and we are looking at a minor upgrade I made of my Astrophotography Star Tracker, the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro. Now this video is specific to the Pro, which includes the fine tuning assembly, and that is the portion here below the Arca Swiss clamp that I've got mounted atop of it. And basically what it is, is an unlabeled declination plate. So you can loosen the, the clutch here on the bottom side of the plate and then freely rotate your mounted imaging equipment to whatever angle you need in declination to point your, your gear toward your stars, your planets, your deep sky objects that you're after. Once you've got that done, have things basically positioned as you want, you lock it down, you lock down this uh, clutch. And then if you need to fine tune things, you've got this nice large rubber knob that allows you to make much more precise adjustments at a finer degree of control. Now, in my case, I, as you see, I do have this panoramic Arca Swiss clamp. So it essentially duplicates that functionality. I could actually lock down the declination clutch, loosen the clamp, and do the same thing. Just rotate my camera as need be. But for now, I'm going to pretend that we've got a fixed clamp, which is what I would expect a lot of people do have. And just say that you basically need an index point of some sort that you can refer to on your mounted equipment. And the idea for this is that, as I recently ran into, I had difficulty locating Andromeda. But... I was able to readily see stars of Pegasus and Cassiopeia. So I thought, okay, if I had a good scale or markings on the declination plate, I, at, which you already do have them for right ascension via the time meridian dial on the back of the uh, tracker, then what I could do is consult one of the astro, uh, astronomy apps on my phone or go look online and find out the celestial coordinates for Andromeda, as well as whatever star I happen to choose to sight my camera upon. And you would sight the camera so that the star is positioned at center of your viewing field. Then, based upon the coordinates you obtain both for the star in use and Andromeda, you could just do some simple math to find out what the offsets are in the uh, right ascension time measurements and the declination angle measurements. And let's just say we, we saw that there was a one hour difference in time. So we could look at our time meridian dial in back of the star watcher, loosen the clutch and rotate it for that one hour difference and then secure our clutch. Then maybe there's a 20 degree difference for declination. And 20 degrees I know here would be, it. Uh, I know Andrea, Andromeda for me is west to the northwest. So I would loosen the declination clutch and let's again just assume that Andromeda is 20 degrees west. So we would rotate the declination plate until the index on the clamp in this case, need to loosen a little bit more, is rotated 20 degrees. Oh, I, <laughs> I loosened the wrong thing. I loosened the securing bolt of the clamp, not of the clutch. Now uh, we can still get the same result. So we rotate it 20 degrees to 340. And now we tighten our clamp in place. So if, if all is good, that would have us positioned to be aimed directly at Andromeda. Um, alternatively, I could do the same thing with my panoramic uh, clamp. But the reason I don't always do that is because it's very convenient when I am working with this uh, star tracker that if the positioning of my subject in the viewfinder is not quite what I want, 
it's very easy to grab this nice large knob to fine tune that. And of course, the moment I start making adjustments here, that's rotating the platform that the clamp is attached to. So the angle measurements I might have been working with off of the clamp's own uh, index scale there would no longer have as much meaning to me. So it's good to have just a fixed reference scale. And that's why I've got this one now attached to the face of the declination assembly. In the uh, description for the video, I have provided a link from which you can download an image that provides you two copies of this scale in a half inch height and two in a four tenths of an inch height using whichever one you favor. Um, I made two different heights because I wasn't sure which was going to work best really with respect to the fact that the metal frame of the declination plate is a textured metal that, as you can tell just by looking at my scotch tape here, is not particularly tape friendly. So I do recommend you glue the scale to the face of the declination frame, but still put a layer of tape over it. And that would be more for moisture protection so that if you have any dew or other condensation on the scale, it doesn't run as much risk of penetrating the paper and causing the ink to seep or smear. But hopefully that will provide you a way to make a useful enhancement of your uh, Star Adventurer Pro. And uh, if you run into similar difficulties as I did, locating a particular object in the sky, but you can find another one, you will now have a great way to reference both axes of your celestial coordinate system and dial in the necessary offset. Have a great day and clear night skies.